Hello class. So we're going to be talking about the lump system today. You've been doing a lot of uh, scavenger hunts and some research and some reading and other things about the lump system, but we're going to take a deep dive and just look at it from a notes perspective. And just got some other fun things to show you. Um, this is all the lymph vessels in, in the body. It kind of looks like the uh, circulatory system, about how it reaches almost all ends of the body with certain concentrations in different parts. So maybe right here in the stomach, that would be like towards the pancreas. There's quite a lot of lymph nodes, or towards the heart, there's some other ones. And there's also a couple of organs like the spleen or the thymus, the diaphragm, that also have functions in the lymph system, as well as the pancreas, which is not shown. Uh, some of the functions, they transport excess fluid to the bloodstream, so um, it's really kind of interconnected with the circulatory system, so they're kind of in a giant meshwork, so they kind of overlap on top of each other, because it's a, it, like in the 3D of your hand, there is lots of blood vessels as well as some lymph um, vessels that are and capillaries that are in your hand that are almost fishnet, fishnetted in. So it transports some of the excess fluid to the bloodstream back to it. Um, helps to reclaim approximately three liters of plasma material lost in the capillary region. So if it wasn't for the lump system, three liters would have been gone. But because of the lump system, it's able to conserve that. Um, it's kind of like the uh, uh, urinary system. It's, it's able to um, uh, let's see, filter out some of the bad stuff in your body. Uh, absorbs fats, that's another thing that it does. And also aids in the body's defense against disease. And a lot of the times the lymph system is actually uh, grouped in with the immune system. That's because it works a lot with the immune system, but also works a lot with the circulatory system and some other body functions. All right. Arrangement. The lymph system is a network of microtubules that travel throughout the body, intermesh with the circulatory system, and there's four main structures that compose the system. So um, you got the capillaries, which we're going to look at first, and how, see how it's kind of intermeshed between the capillaries of the um, blood vessels. See how the lymph in the green is like intermeshed with it, and some of the extra, you know, plasma that's lost is going to reabsorb back into the lymph system and then it will be reinserted into the circulatory system. And as you can see, there's it on the cellular level, um, very small openings right here. And that's where that stuff would go back into the lymph system where it ultimately goes back into the circulatory system. Four main structures that compose this system, different sizes of tubes. Uh, first, you got lymph capillaries. This is the smallest, microscopic, closed-ended tubes. As you can see, ends that extend into interstitial space and receive lymph through their cell wall, thin walls. So they go back into, the lymph goes into the lymph capillaries where it then transfers back to the, eventually to the circulatory system, close to the heart. But very thin walls, it's only... See, if you want to go back to that last slide, that's a cell, and then that's how thin their cell wall, the walls of the uh, lymph, cyst, uh, lymph capillaries are. So not very big. Uh, lymph vessels, these are a little bit bigger and thicker that have walls like um, blood veins, but only a little thinner. Uh, they have valves to help prevent backflow of lymph materials. Do you remember with the heart, there's certain, like, you know, the aortic valve and stuff like that, and that's to help, you know, backwash, you know, so things don't, so what it does is, is that it can let things in like that, but it's really hard for it to let things out. And your stomach also has valves as well. Um, larger vessels will lead to lymph nodes and lymphatic trunks. So a little bit bigger even still. So lymphatic trunks, they are the thickest um, of the tubes, and they kind of lead close to the heart. Um, they're in your more of your, uh, ab uh, let's see, thoracic and abdominal region. As you can see, the thoracic uh, trunk is three, 
accounts for three-fourths of the body, and the right lymphatic is the upper quarter of the body. Lymph nodes, capsular structures that are usually only an inch or less in length and are subdivided into numerous compartments. So that's what all these little bean-shaped things are on this little guy is. they All those little uh, rounder bean-shaped structures, those are all lymph nodes. And your body, I think, has about 600 of them. Uh, lymph nodes are also known as lymph glands, and they're collecting regions and important in the production of lymphocytes and various other phagocyt phagocytotic cells. So phagocytotic and lymphocytes, those are relates to the immune system, and those are the things that uh, kill pathogens and take down pathogens. So what happens is when you get an infection is, is that your lymph nodes, especially here, the doctor might look at your lymph nodes to see if they are expanded and that's how they can kind of tell maybe where the infection is whether it's spread to the rest of your body and stuff like that so they really play the lymph system really ties closely with the immune system lymph fluid it's material in the lymph vessels that is primarily strained plasma from the bloodstream so there's no uh, red blood cells or some larger proteins in the lymph fluid that is in the blood. It's very similar. Um, lymph fluid would be like the blood to the lymph system as blood is to the circulatory system. It's just that stuff that's basically getting transported around. And since you know that those openings are very small, only smaller proteins and um, messages and hormones can actually get in. So stuff like red blood cells, they cannot get in. And I believe one of the videos that you watched or will watch kind of talks about that, about the different components of lymph and how it's not really even considered lymph until it enters the lymph system. Primarily function of lymph nodes, it's filtering harmful particles from lymph before returning to the bloodstream. A lot of them is pathogens. So it's kind of like um, going through the TSA, it's you know, they're searching far and wide for those nasty little bacteria and viruses that are floating through your bloodstream every day. Um, immune surveillance, so, you know, uh, surveillance, you know, you think of security cameras, it's lymphocytes, which are the policemen of your body that are looking for harmful bacteria or viruses and other parasitic cells. The lymph lymph lymphatic vessels bring to the node so uh and it also has to do with cancer too um lymphocytes will also attack some some cancer cells as well so it has kind of they really are the policemen of your cell of your body that's the best example for them uh let's go on to some conditions so lymphangitis it is inflamed superficial uh, lymphatic vessels that appear as red streaks. As you can see, there's red streaks here, and that's it's inflamed. Uh, lymphadenitis, it is inflammation of the lymph nodes due to infection. So there's a whole bunch of bacteria and more, um, uh, let's see, uh, white blood cells and immuno immunoglobulins that are there that are basically attacking that infection right there and what hap what's happening is is that all that lymph is bringing um, all those white blood cells and all those um, all that pathogens into the lymph nodes where it basically gets ambushed and attacked uh, lymphadenopathy it's enlargement of the lymph nodes or the glands and this is from infection or cancer Lymphadopenia, it's too few lymphocytes in circulation associated with HIV. The virus attacks the lymphocytes, using them to replicate before destroying them and immune disorders. So what HIV does is that it specifically goes after immune cells. So, you know, the common cold or coronavirus, um, they go after, you know, mucus cells or in your, in your like your respiratory tract, whereas HIV, it attacks um your immune system so that's why it's so harmful um, when people die of hiv or aids they aren't dying from hiv what they're dying from is a small cold 
that's basically run rampant because their immune immune system is compromised. So that's why HIV is so dangerous. Immunocompetence. So when you're competent, you know you're smart and you're able to do your job well. So it's the ability to produce an immune response to the presence of an antigen. So it's normal whenever you get a cut on like your finger or whatever, there's going to be some bacteria that gets in there. And most people's bodies are able to uh, handle that. Every once in a while, you'll get an infection, but usually it's not a big deal. And that's just because we're all immunocompetent. Immunodeficiency is an inability to produce an immune response. So if you don't have any immune cells or not very many, like when people have HIV, then that's when that cut, or that scrape, that's where it becomes an issue. So I believe Bubble Boy, I think he was back in the 80s, he had a compromised immune system and he had to basically spend his entire life in a ball or a, a bubble. Lymphocytosis, too many lymphocytes in circulation, so there's just too many, too many cooks. Uh, lymphoma, uh, foma, a lot of times you might hear that with cancer or tumor composed of lymphatic tissue, so a lot of, of your uh, cells, different cancers, so like uh, mycoloma, I believe that's uh, uh, cancer of the muscles, I want to say. Um, anyway, lymphoma is composed of lymphatic tissue. All right. Lymphosarcoma, it's cancer within lymphatic tissue. So this is composed of it, and that's within. All right, body defense against infection, so nonspecific de defenses, first line of defense is species resistance. So humans have species disease, specific diseases that are unique to us that we do not pass down to other species and vice versa. So um, most like viruses, they're only going to uh, infect humans or pigs or birds or frogs or whatever that is. They just have one or two um, certain things that it infects. So with the coronavirus, what happens is, is that a lot of times viruses can make a jump from different species. So like from the coronavirus, it made a jump from a bat. And, you know, like swine flu, that made a jump from a pig. Bird flu, the avian flu, that was from birds. Um, but usually, it's usually just harmful. Uh, like viruses and specific diseases are only basically targeted, target one type of host. Uh, there's some other things that are non-specific defenses against infection, so like mechanical barriers, so like skin and mucus cells. So like your skin is a very big membrane. It's like your wall of your body. Um, your mucous membranes, so like your nose, like all your boogers, that's a bunch of like bacteria that your, your body is not letting into your, that's not letting into your body. So like really to get into it and that would do some harm. So that's why you don't pick your nose. <clears throat> uh, some chemical barriers, so like gastric juices, so it's like in your uh, digestive system, uh, salts from sweat, so your sweat is really salty, so a lot of bacteria and viruses, they don't like salt because that can do, do a lot of harm from them. So when you take a lot of showers, maybe that's making your nonspecific defense against infection not as effective. And then interferons from lymphocytes are another chemical barrier. Uh, fevers, so they cause the body to conserve its iron supply, which bacteria and fungi require during high temps. So your body, um, it basically ups its temp. It's, it's the, uh, when you have a fever or you get sick, your body is making that fever. It's not doing it like the bacteria is not doing the fever, it's your body trying to kill the bacteria, it's trying to make it too hot so that its proteins don't work as well. So like actually white blood cells or lymphocytes, they actually work better at a little higher temps than at normal temps. So when you have a fever, your lymphocytes get kicked into high gear and that's also to stop bacteria and other diseases like fungi too.
and inflammation localized area which will increase phagocytic activity due to local infections so um, there's a bunch more uh, different white blood cells that are going to be sent to that area and attack them uh, body defense against infection so specific defenses so this is the third line of defense uh, so the recognition of foreign antigens and haptins versus self so this is the most uh, this is the most uh, most powerful I guess way uh, it's the last line of defense but it's a very effective way of defense so it's recognition of foreign antigens and haptins versus self so yourself would be like your own proteins um, it's why that when you give like a person with AB blood they really can't donate blood to anyone else except with AB blood and that's because they have foreign antigens in which your bacteria or your body will attack that blood that is reinserted because it has different surface proteins that your body is not used to that's another problem with organ transplants it's because your body's it's not itself so it's foreign to them so it's going to attack them a lot of the times and then cellular immune response so phagocytosis and antibody production so basically antibodies attached to that uh that bad thing and then it's like hey you should kill this thing because it's an invader so then your phagocytes they pretty much swallow it up destroy it and that's kind of how that works so for your assignment you will look up the spleen and thymus and explain how they are related to the lymph system plus where they are located in the body so the lymph and the thymus are very important to the lymph system and it's your job to take a look and see what that what they do uh, and they also need to read the genetics connections on page pages 384 and 385 and summarize the information in five to eight sentences so I'll, I'll put a link to this assignment on Google Classroom, and you can do that for Thursday. That's all. Have a good day.